You should give Josh points for not adding a testicle in his ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> I can grate some fresh on top. Yeah, maybe not a testicle. I'm not into that too much. Hey guys, it's Mike Chen. Welcome to Coneheads on First Wheat Feast. Now, summer's here, the temperature's rising, and in the food world, that really just means one thing, ice cream. So every single week, I'm gonna be exploring some of the most delicious frozen eats in the world, all from the comforts of my own home, and I'm taking you with me. And I know during lockdown, a lot of us are cooking, polishing our culinary skills, watching tutorials online. Let that all melt away from your brain because here on Coneheads, we've got the latest scoop on some amazing ice cream hacks that are just legend, wait for it, dairy, legendary. Virtual high five. And to kick things off, I got one of my favorite YouTube chefs joining me, Josh Schur. He's gonna show us simple ice cream DIY recipes that you can make at home that will for sure level up, nay, super saiyanize your ice cream game. And you might have seen Josh on Good Mythical Morning. He also has his own channel, Mythical Kitchen, where he's teaching everyone how to cook everything from a $300 in and out burger to uh, testicles. So Josh, thanks for joining us. Yeah, Mike, thank you so much for plugging my bull testicles. Uh, we actually have testicles available at the Mythical store. That's mythical.store for all your bull testicle needs. Very good information to know. I said I wouldn't bring up testicles in the first two minutes of this episode, and it already happened. I'm sorry, guys. All right, Josh, now back to ice cream. Um, I got a question for you. Why do you like making ice cream at home instead of going to a store? Yeah, I think homemade ice cream is really fun, right? It's like infinitely customizable when you make it at home. And I think things always taste better when your hands have like physically touched them. You know, it means a lot more to you to be able to like, you know, eat a product that you've created rather than something that's just store-bought. So like, it's fun. And also, you know, uh, like you said, during lockdown, people are boning up on their cooking skills. Might as well include ice cream into that can, you know what I'm saying? Where do we start? All right, man, so we are going to start with a recipe that I believe Martha Stewart is actually sort of responsible for creating. Now with what we know about her and Snoop Dogg, she may have been stoned when she did it. Uh, more power to her. So we are going to start with a method that's super easy. All you have to do is basically whipped cream, fold in your sweeteners, and then all it does is sit in the freezer. So like no churning, no ice cream makers, no nothing. Just you and the power of Martha Stewart's stoned forearms. I legally, I can't say she was stoned due to libel reasons. All right, Josh, you convinced me. Let's make some ice cream. Let's do it, brother. Let's get to cream in that cream. All right, Josh, I got all the ingredients you told me to get. How do we transform this into something I can stuff in my mouth? All right, man, so this is what I'm calling like the hacked up version of homemade ice cream, right? So all you're gonna do is you're gonna take the heavy whipping cream and you're gonna whip it by hand because you wanna pour your own physical blood, sweat, and tears into this. That's actually what seasons it. And then you're gonna pour in the sweetened condensed milk, a little bit of vanilla extract, and then when you set this in the freezer overnight, all the air bubbles from the whipping are actually gonna set it into this like beautiful ice creamy consistency. So you're looking for soft peaks. You don't want stiff peaks and you don't want twin peaks. I've never seen it, I've heard it's really great. So you want soft peaks, which means uh, if you put a spoon in it, it should be able to kind of peak up by itself and then slowly drizzle down. Ain't nothing to it but to do it, man. Just shove your whisk in the bowl and start creaming that cream. All right, I got you. I'm just gonna go. And you wanna spray cream just all over your cooking station. You wanna keep your muscles loose, don't tense up. <laughs> See, do it, you really, seriously. Workout video, kitchen utensils. I gotta do like the white lady Brentwood workout class. Come on, do those butt kickers. Do you want abs, ladies? It's beach season coming up. Do you, do you respond to negative or positive reinforcement? Really tense the shoulder and get the hips into it. Come on, Mike. You can do this. Pick up the pace. Wait, am I peaking? You're peaking, man. Mike, you got the softest peaks in the game. I think we're ready to fold in the condensed milk and the vanilla. All right, perfect. So when you're saying folding in, what do you, what do you mean by that for people who don't speak chef? All right, so what you're doing is you're basically trying to not deflate the cream because when ice cream is made in a factory, it has what's called overrun, which is the amount of air that's been pumped into it. And when you churn it, that's what's happening. So right now you've basically like pre-churned air into your ice cream so you don't want to deflate it. You basically want to start at the sides of the bowl and then just gently bring it towards the middle. You're just going to take that and all you're going to do is dump it into whatever container you have. I'm just using a solid. I'm going to make up a measurement. A uh, 13 centimeter by two and a half centimeter loaf pan. Let it set in that loaf pan, pop it in the freezer, let it sit overnight. You and I are going to have a virtual sleepover where, uh, I don't know, we just watch all the Marvel movies. That's how real bros hang, okay?
All right, Mike, this has been setting overnight. How'd you sleep? Been thinking about this all night. I had night terrors. How? You have ice cream waiting for you. It's like something beautiful waiting for you in the morning. I slept so sweetly. That's a beautiful perspective. I think I should probably just talk to someone. All right, so let's dig into this. Let's see how the ice cream actually turned out. It scoops like real ice cream. It is real ice cream. What am I saying? This is ice cream. Making ice cream at home is easy and you should do it. Oh yeah. This is a workout too. Is it supposed to be? This is it, man. This is your recovery workout. You get rewarded with the ice cream after your workout. That's how it works. Cheers, buddy. In the words of the old country, L'chaim. Yo, that actually tastes like ice cream. I don't know why I was doubting it. <laughs> I was too the whole time. I've done this before, but every time I'm just like, this isn't gonna taste like ice cream. It does, you know? You're not gonna make the best ice cream that you've ever had at home. You know, there's people who have devoted their entire lives to that. Mike, you've devoted approximately nine minutes to making ice cream, but this is still pretty solid, right? It's solid ice cream. It's definitely sweet. Oh yeah, uh-huh. Mm. Another chef trick. If you're ever worried about your technique, dump a bunch of sugar into the food. It tastes better. I know you're really good at a lot of things, but what I'm good at is tossing a bunch of crab into a bowl and make it taste good. So I challenge you, man, I'm throwing down ice cream sundae battle. It's a crap off. All right, the moment we've been all waiting for, all my sundae ingredients are laid out. Josh, I see you got all yours there as well. Let the Sunday death match begin. You go first, buddy. Ale cuisine. All right, so, sorry, I watched a lot of Iron Chef America. I'm going a little bit simple with this. I'm doing kind of like a take on like a fried banana split. So I'm gonna take my nanners, I'm gonna cut them in little off shapes. I'm gonna toss them in the hot oil. I have no idea how hot this oil is. Uh, it might just explode in my face. And then if I die, Mike wins by default, I guess. There we go, those are frying up nice. All right, so we got the nanners frying. I really like kind of burnt and caramelly flavors. So I'm gonna melt some butter in a pan. I'm gonna toss in a bunch of brown sugar, and I'm gonna either drink the shot of bourbon, no, I'll just add the bourbon in there. Are you gonna make it flame up as well? Are you gonna add that to your arsenal? Oh, I could, should we do that? Trevor, grab me a blowtorch! No, nah, we, uh, uh, I've had my live fire privileges revoked in this kitchen. That is a real thing. Uh, we've had to have some talks about it. All right, we got this caramel sauce working. Oh, that's lovely. <sighs> oh, no. Oh, oh, oh. Dude, I oh. did it again twice in two days. No. You spilled sugar. I got the ice cream. I'm just gonna layer my fried bananas around it, make it look nice and pretty. Now I'm gonna take that brown sugar bourbon caramel and I'm just gonna get that all over the bananas and the ice cream. I'm liquoring up my breakfast sundae, man. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't have a cherry in his back pocket to put on top of that. Trevor, actually, legit, find the Luxardo cherries in the fridge and throw them at me. Dude, that was a team Mike assist. <laughs> I got an assist, look, man, I'm bringing back up to a fight. You're calling this a death match. I'm gonna have Trevor throwing cherries to me. <laughs> throwing some salted peanuts on there for a little crunch. We got the fancy Luxardo cherries. This isn't your maraschino. This is the stuff they put what? in like a Manhattan cocktail. We're dropping that on there too. I'm calling it a day. I'm calling this done. I spilled a little bit of burnt sugar, but we got the Luxardo cherry, bourbon caramel, fried banana split with a little bit of salted peanuts on top. Mike, your move, buddy. I don't have any fire in mine, but I did bring the heat because mine's gonna be a simple recipe. I got my trusty cleaver. I got some Kit Kats. I got some Pocky or imitation Pocky and some little marshmallows. So Kit Kat. Smash it with my cleaver. That's a pro move. Mike, you are a real chef, man. Never sell yourself short again. And I got my personal hot oil that I made. I always keep a batch of this on hand. This is uh, a little sesame oil, sesame seed, vegetable oil, fried chilies, and bits of sesame in there as well. So you get a little crunch, you get a little saltiness. You're definitely getting a lot of spiciness. Put our pocky sticks in there. A Little bit of marshmallows go in. That's looking pretty, man. You got the crown of pocky in there and another drizzle. There you go. You can also chopstick the thing. That's, that is a beautiful thing, Mike. All right, Josh, I gotta say, your Sunday looks pretty darn good. Uh, fancy schmancy, mine looks like a hot mess, literally. Uh, but we need an impartial judge, and I can't think of anyone better. All the way from France, Alex from Alex French Guy Cooking. Hey, welcome to the show, Alex. Hey, Mike, how are you? Thank you so much for this. Hey man, I just wanna say thank you so much for being here. Uh, your, your glasses look amazing, it's just awesome. <laughs> Stop buttering me up. Alex, whatever Mike's paying you, I'll double. 
I don't care what it takes. I need to win this thing. I got kids, man. I don't have any kids. I lied. I'm sorry. It doesn't work on me. So, sorry, guys. It doesn't work on me. I'm just going to be the most impartial judge ever. I've got two amazing ice cream in front of me, and I'm dying to try them out. So what we did here was that we sent Alex our ingredients list and cooking instruction and he, of course, did his own interpretation on our recipes. Uh, we're gonna start off with Josh. Is Josh, you wanna tell Alex what you, what you cooked? Uh, yes, Alex, what you have prepared for you today is a fried banana split. We have some beautifully caramelized bananas, should add a little bit of complexity and that nice brulee flavor. We have some salted peanuts and then a bourbon brown sugar caramel. Please, chef, enjoy what you have created for you. Okay, I'm, go I'm going in, I'm going for, for, for a good scoop of both the sauce, the banana, the ice cream. Mmm. Mmm. Putain. Well, that, well, that's very good. Not gonna lie, that's very good. C'est trop délicieux. You don't, you don't get three points for speaking French, my, my man. Just un peu. <laughs> so, yeah, it tastes amazing. The sweetness is not overpowering, that's what I would say. Because I think the bananas and the caramelized vibe is bringing also a bit of toasty, I don't know, something charred or toasty, something that, that pairs quite well with the bourbon. The bourbon has that smoky flavor as well, so it's like a grown-up ice cream somehow. In terms of like wow factor, yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit, it might be just a touch expected. Chef, I tried to show restraint. I know you're okay. a classy guy, I'm a classy guy. I okay. wanted to show you my technique. Yeah, exactly. You're right, this is classic. Can I go on to the next one? Mike, first of all, the other one is just cleaner visually. It's um, very easy to distinct the different elements. It looks a bit childish, to be honest. That's me. My inner ice cream child is screaming out. Exactly, there's nothing wrong with a childish ice cream, especially a sundae. I'm all for this. Like on, on movie night, I would make myself something pretty similar to this, minus. And that's that's the thing that just keeps on, you know, poking my brain. Minus the chili oil. Are you mad? Are you mad? Man, this, this, is a, this might be like just a bold or a stupid move. I don't know. This is a, This is a good fight, Mike. <laughs> this is weird. I mean, chili oil is not bad, to be honest. Chili oil it has some... Uh, you know what? I'm starting to feel something similar to this one. Oh, I'm getting the kick. Uh-oh. Uh -oh, Don't worry, the ice cream will, 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 will help but you I with like that. But I like this. This is pure endorphin. Okay, so, so, <laughs> so, so I'm getting something similar to your dish. At first, I thought these ice creams, they are just diametrically opposed. But then the chili oil brings it back to this. There's some similarities in your two dishes. All right, the suspense is killing me. I, I, I see that me and Josh have both taken up the, uh, the waiting for the verdict polls, which is like hands behind the back, anxiously awaiting your judgment. Yes, chef. If you had to pick one, Alex, which one would you pick? By the way, nice glasses. <laughs> it's not working, man. It's not working. It's a weak compliment. Come up with something greater than this. If I were to be in a restaurant and I see both of these on the menu, Vanilla ice cream chili oil and bourbon banana vanilla ice cream. It's gonna sound weird. I think I, I would taste the chili oil. Boom! Boom, Mike! Woo! Sunday is my favorite day! And that is why! He's not even a real chef, he just eats food on the internet. The reason is simple. <laughs> I I love stepping out of my comfort zone. I I I, I live and breathe for the creative side of cooking. And that just speaks to something weird inside my mind. You ask me if this one is good, it's good. This one, just, it's fun. It's funny, I like what's funny. It's been a pleasure spending the morning with you making these great creations. Josh, thank you so much for all the DIY ice cream hacks. Those are really awesome. Didn't know I could actually make ice cream this easily in my own kitchen. Alex, thank you so much for coming on the show. Pleasure. You've been the ultimate judge. I highly <laughs> respect your opinion. And guys, definitely check out their channels. Uh, Mythical Kitchen is amazing. And Alex, French guy cooking too. You're an amazing chef. Um, 
amazing channel. Check that out as well. One last bite for a great send off, guys. Mm. Right, cheers, everyone. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Mm. I think mine's a winner. <laughs>